This chapter covers the following topics, structured control language, SCL programming, and graph programming. Completion of this chapter will help you develop a basic understanding of these PLC programming languages. Structured Control Language, SCL, is a high-level text-based PLC programming language. SCL is integrated in Step 7 Professional as S7 SCL. Like the other PLC languages, SCL can access the various PLC memory areas and perform basic control tasks. But its primary advantage is that it simplifies the programming of mathematical algorithms and complex data processing tasks. Because of its similarity to other high-level programming languages, SCL is an easy language for people with computer programming experience to learn. In addition, when properly documented, SCL programs are often easier to understand. An SCL program is made up of statements which are executed in logical order. A statement can be preceded by an optional jump label, which is followed by a colon. A statement can be short or can extend over multiple lines, but must be terminated with a semicolon. Multiple statements can also be included in one line. A statement can be followed by an optional line comment, which begins with two slashes. Line comments are used to explain the function of the line. Block comments begin with an open parentheses and asterisk, and end with an asterisk and close parentheses. Blank lines can also be added to make the code easier to follow. Comments in blank lines do not affect the operation of the program. SCL statements can include a variety of operators, some of which are shown in the accompanying graphic. Because the order of execution is important to the result of an operation, these operators have an associated execution priority. These operators are used with operands that identify memory areas where values are stored. As described earlier in this course, operands can be absolute operands, which are preceded by a percent sign in Step 7 TIA portal, or alphanumeric tags. A tag preceded by pound sign is assigned to one program block. A tag enclosed in quotation marks is available to any program block. One or more operators are combined with operands to form an expression, such as pound sign parts 1 plus pound sign parts 2. The value of an expression can be assigned to another operand using the assignment symbol. The SCL statement example at the bottom in the accompanying graphic adds the values in pound sign parts 1 and pound sign parts 2 and assigns the sum to pound sign parts total. This statement has an optional comment at the end but no optional label. Like the other PLC programming languages described in this course, SCL can be used to perform control logic operations. For example, the accompanying graphic shows the equivalent SCL statements for some of the LAD and FBD bit logic networks described earlier in this course. But the primary advantage of SCL is that it simplifies the programming of mathematical algorithms and complex data processing tasks. This is made possible in part by the control statements described in the following pages. SCL programs have statements that are executed in logical order, but not necessarily in consecutive order. This is because SCL programs permit branching, which occurs when statements are conditionally selected for execution, and looping, which occurs when statements are executed repetitively until a condition is met. Program statements used to control branching and looping are referred to as control statements. As the accompanying graphic shows, there are multiple types of control statements. Taken as a whole, these statements simplify programming and allow for more compact and readable program code. 
An if statement directs the program execution to one of two branches depending upon whether a condition is true or false. A condition can be simple or complex and can include multiple operators and variables as long as the condition can be tested as true or false. In the simplest example, as shown in the accompanying graphic, if the condition following the if statement is true, the statements following the then statement are executed. If the condition is false, these statements are not executed. Regardless of which branch is followed, the branching is terminated by an end if statement. An if statement can also branch to either of two sets of statements. For example, as shown in the accompanying graphic, an else statement can be used. If the condition is true, the statements following the then statement are executed. If the condition is false, the statements following the else statement are executed. In the example shown in the accompanying graphic, the insertion of else if branching, sometimes referred to as nesting, provides for additional branching flexibility. If the first condition is true, the statements following the then statement are executed. If the condition is false, the second condition preceded by an else if statement is tested. If the second condition is true, the statements following a second then statement are executed. If the second condition is false, the statements following the else statement are executed. In combination, these control statements provide useful branching options, but these are not the only branching options. The case statement directs the program execution to one of multiple branches, depending on the value of a selection integer. Regardless of which branch is followed, the branching ends with an end case statement. As the accompanying graphic shows, each statement group, except for the statement group preceded by the optional else statement, has a range value or a set of values. If the selection integer is equal to a value within the set of range values for a statement group, that statement group is executed. If the selection value is not within the range of values for any statement group, the statements preceded by the else statement are executed. The range for a statement can be expressed as a single integer, integer values separated by commas, a minimum and maximum integer value separated by two periods, or a combination of these last two approaches. A for statement causes the statements following a do statement to be executed repetitively. As the accompanying graphic shows, a control value is set to an initial value, and after each time the statements following the do statement are executed, an increment value is added to the control value. When the control value is greater than the final value, the loop is terminated. An end for statement completes this part of the program. A while statement causes the statements following a do statement to be executed repetitively as long as the condition is true. As the accompanying graphic shows, if the condition is initially false, the statements following the do statement are never executed. If the condition is true, the looping continues until the condition is false. An end while statement completes this part of the program. Although not shown in this graphic, while loops can be nested within a while loop. A repeat statement causes the statements following the repeat statement to be executed repetitively as long as the condition is true. As the accompanying graphic shows, the condition is not tested until after the statements following the repeat statement are processed. This means that these statements must be executed at least once. If the condition is true, the looping continues until the condition is false. An end repeat statement completes this part of the program. Although not shown in this graphic, repeat loops can be nested within a repeat loop. In combination, these control statements provide useful loop control options, but these are not the only options. A continue statement is used with a for, while, or repeat loop to cause a program loop to proceed with the next iteration of the loop when a condition is met. As shown in the accompanying graphic, an if condition with a continue statement is placed within a series of statements. The for loop proceeds as previously described as long as the if condition is false. 
When the if condition is true, the loop proceeds with the next iteration without processing the remaining statements. As shown in the accompanying graphic, an if condition with a continue statement is placed within a series of statements. The while loop proceeds as previously described as long as the if condition is false. When the if condition is true, the loop proceeds with the next iteration without processing the remaining statements. As shown in the accompanying graphic, an if condition with a continue statement is placed within a series of statements. The repeat loop proceeds as previously described as long as the if condition is false. When the if condition is true, the loop proceeds with the next iteration without processing the remaining statements. In combination, these control statements provide additional loop control options, but there are additional options. An exit statement is used with a for, while, or repeat loop to exit a program loop when a condition is met. As shown in the accompanying graphic, an if condition with an exit statement is placed in a series of statements. The for loop proceeds as previously described as long as the if condition is false. When the if condition is true, the loop is terminated without the execution of the remaining statements. As shown in the accompanying graphic, an if statement with an exit statement is placed within a series of statements. The while loop proceeds as previously described as long as the if condition is false. When the if condition is true, the loop is terminated without the execution of the remaining statements. As shown in the accompanying graphic, an if statement with an exit statement is placed within a series of statements. The repeat loop proceeds as previously described as long as the if condition is false. When the if condition is true, the loop is terminated without the execution of the remaining statements. As you have seen, these control statements provide multiple loop control options. And combined with other control statements, they provide SCL with features that are typical of higher level programming languages.